This all started a couple of days ago, July 5th, where I'd get a random call from FedEx around 10 p.m. where they would ask me for my name and address, which they already knew. I gave it to them, thinking it might be a package that was lost and somehow found its way back to my home. Hindsight, I should have known FedEx doesn't deliver past 8 p.m. here in Canada. I thought nothing of it till I got another phone call saying that they can't find my unit number and asked me to come out to the roundabout nearby my place. My dad thought it was weird, so he patrolled the area to find these people. My dad did around four laps. The first lap, there wasn't anything there, but then I got curious and joined him for the second lap. Yet again, nothing. I went back into my home, and my dad did a third lap around the house. He found a gray SUV in the corner and confronted them. They told my dad that they aren't the delivery person, and my dad left to do another confirmation check. As he was doing this last lap, the same SUV wasn't there. The next day, July the 6th, around 6 to 11 p.m., we hear a doorbell ringing, and I went down to check, and it was two individuals around the ages of 20. They knew my name and was calling out for me. I thought it was weird because I've never seen them before. I didn't feel safe, so I didn't pursue them. They kept coming over and over again, so we called the police and talked about what we should do. The cops told me to contact them if this happens again. The next day, July the 7th, it was very quiet and nothing weird happened, so we thought the worst had ended and just went on with my day. The next day, July the 8th, it was the same quietness, but when the time approached 11 p.m., my security camera spotted an individual with a mask on, taking photos and videos of my current house. This was the breaking point. We contacted the police and informed them about this weird behavior. Just when I thought it was over, I was casually in the living room around 3 a.m. the same day, July the 8th. I heard something thunking outside my balcony. I thought it could be anything and didn't mind it till it thunked again. I went to the balcony to go see what I was hearing, then it clicked. I was face to face with an intruder. I started screaming for help and my family came down to check out the commotion. Thank God I checked the balcony that day. Who knows what else could have happened. Today is July the 9th and I haven't gotten a wink of sleep thinking of the terror that I faced. Am I one of the targets of a home invasion? How did they know my name? And what did they want from me? This story takes place in the summer of 2023. Me and my friend were hanging out at her house, and we fell on a subject that is passionate for the both of us, urbex. And as we were talking about that, she told me that there was an abandoned factory about 30 minutes away from her house. Two seconds is what it took for us to get our backpacks full of cigarettes, food, and water, and then we started walking. We took some five minute breaks from time to time and continued on our path. We arrived and we were absolutely in love with the creepiness and the absence of life in this place. Let me introduce you to the four buildings. It will help you understand the rest of the story. The first building was locked. No more information, probably somewhere to stock wood and material. The second building was a big factory. It was the biggest building in the four. There is three floors, a basement, a working space, and an eating place at the highest floor. The third building, a structure of wood to contain all the machines. And finally, a fourth building, a small gas station where there were keys of other rooms. There was a second floor, but we didn't go to the second one for a reason that you will see further in the story. Okay, so we enter the big factory, the second building. At first, we were getting shivers, but as time passed, we got more and more comfortable with the place we were in. Not gonna lie, the alcohol helped out a little bit with that. Then comes the moment. We had to do it. We were so curious. We stood in front of the door and opened it. There we were, in the basement. As we advanced in the room, we arrived to a small office. There was fresh coffee in a cup. 
We didn't think anything much of it at first. Maybe people like us came here. We didn't have the time to make any theories, and then we heard something. A clown horn. We looked at each other and laughed nervously. We thought that one of us stepped on a toy or something else. But again, a clown horn yelled right behind us before we heard a cynical and traumatizing laugh. We ran to the door and left outside as fast as we could. We then stood there outside, scared. At this point, we didn't believe what was happening, so we laughed it off and took another sip of our beers. Now, we went back. Yes, it was a stupid idea, I know. But don't worry. We didn't stay there even five minutes that we saw a hand open the same basement door, and that was it. We ran back home. I never ran so fast in my entire life. But I think there is a small detail that will make you understand how bad it could have really been. One hour later, we were going to the restaurant as we heard gunshots at the exact position of where the factory was. Ever since I started living at this house, weird things have happened. It regularly sounds like someone is walking on the outside of the house at night and it's starting to freak me and my roommates out. For some context, this is a college house. Four girls in our 20s looking for a fun place to live. There have been a few different encounters that have led us to this conclusion and it only continues to fall into place. Let's go back to this summer when the first break-in was. An evening in September in the middle of the week, the garage door, which by the way has never been used by us other than storage, opened and one of us was at home with music blasting. She heard it and didn't think anything of it, but about five minutes later went upstairs to check and found her garage door open and the back door unlocked. Again, we do not use our garage. She looked around and found nothing missing and figured it was an accident. About a month later, we were having a party and it was around Halloween. We decided to do a costume party. Around 12 to 1 a.m., someone was in our backyard and turned to see a man walking up the side of our house. When the man saw him, he ran away up the hill. We also, around this time, had one of our car windows broken. Nothing was stolen, just the window was broken. Last night while driving around, we noticed the car we had seen drive by a few times and followed it up the hill. The man in this car was a middle-aged white man with very receding hairline and arms covered in tattoos. He comes to a complete stop in the middle of the street and turns around to look at us and then he pulls to the side of the road. He waited there for a few minutes and we waited one street over. We saw him turn left and then followed him up into the neighborhood in front of ours. We lost sight of him and we drove around the neighborhood a bit more. When driving in front of our house, we were wondering if anyone behind could see into our rooms and we went to look in the street behind us. The house that had a direct view into my room happened to have the same car that was driving around the house sitting right in front of it. This car is very distinct. It's an old white sedan with a black shoe mark on the rear bumper. We immediately went back to our house and looked out the window at the house and realized we had seen someone there before. On multiple separate occasions, there was a middle-aged man standing in the window looking at our house or sitting on the back porch in a lawn chair facing our house. Last night, when we went to bed, my roommate had her window open and heard footsteps, our fence gate open and car doors. The footsteps sounded like they were directly outside her window and I also heard them. Normally, I wouldn't jump to conclusion, but I feel like these occurrences just connect too well to be coincidental. If anyone has any ideas or input, please let me know. We are genuinely scared. I will update if there's anything else that happens.